Dried blood spot or dried plasma spot analysis as applies to forensic analytical chemistry and specifically toxicology for drugs of abuse testing is an emerging science that there has been some recent activity in the peer-reviewed literature. I want to tell you and talk to you about this technology that's emerging and evaluate the benefits and also limitations of this assay as I see it coming more into vogue. Dried blood spot DBS or dried plasma spot DPS is a recent technology when measured against the long-standing forms of analysis on different matrices. It was first popularized by Dr. Robert Guthrie in the early 1960s. It has since been used uh, then primarily in the neonatal context. It is most frequently used as a screening test right after birth to determine whether or not the child has PKU. If you had a child in the last 30 or 40 years in the United States of America, this is what they're doing right after birth when they perform a finger prick or more likely a foot prick test on your newborn. There is some limited and early research that's promising using this method as a screening test for HIV. Now some of the forensics people in the forensics arena have watched the research advancements in this technology and are investigating its possible application to the forensic science world. Some are seeking to prove its validity in terms of confirmation-related testing in drugs of abuse analysis and quantification. What also spurs on this research are the strides being made in the clinical and pharmaceutical world. Uh, there are large push in those worlds to move uh, this direction in the clinical arena, especially due to cost savings as well as in terms of analyst and collector being exposed to less biohazards. There were a lot of presentations on it that I've noticed in the last several national clinical meetings. In the pharmaceutical industry, there is also a push to get the FDA to more readily accept this type of technology in animal studies as it will reduce the number of animals needed for a given study. Thus, it will save a lot of money and also save a lot of animals. The whole idea is to reduce the amount of blood volume necessary and save money. In the peer-reviewed research that's been published concerning DBS and DPS, there's some limited data in terms of the correlation to whole blood and plasma blood, and in terms of recovery using this method for qualitative and also quantitative analysis. It confirms that this is just an emergence field, and there is still a lot of questions as to its validity, especially as to its possible quantitative use. In the literature, it is confirmed that at this time, there's a large-scale limitation to this technology, just to name a few areas of concern. There's a, they include the following. There's a difference in venous blood and peripheral blood sampling, especially when considering pharmacokinetic issues. Typically, DBS is not taken from the same spot as whole blood is taken. Also, there is a real concern of random sampling error with such a small sample size being tested. It's a three millimeter diameter punch in a 15 microliter spot, which is equivalent to less than three microliters of blood, very small sample size. There's been noticed some issues with uh, respect to reliability and establishing limits of quantification in some drugs, especially inhaled drugs. Also, the choice of the cards in their substrates that the dry blood are placed on can cause recovery issues from one brand to another. The chemicals impregnated on these specific types of cards can co-extract with the analyte and cause increased suppression-related effects. In addition to that, the assay validation requirements are truly up in the air. Currently, there's no guidance from regulators around the world. There are no clinical standards even published for its use either. The choice of extraction solvent can present issues as well. This gives a particularly large issue in terms of the extracts with respect to methanol versus other types of extracts, and water can give also very dirty backgrounds in terms of the extract. There's suspected to be storage and transportation issues in terms of the sample cards. This, of course, is significant for retest issues that's necessary in forensic world and also overall stability is recorded over time and that more experiments are necessary. Also, additionally, obviously, drying the blood spot completely on the card is required. Humidity is always a factor. Where you take the punch from and how big the dried spot is controls whether or not the sample is likely to be homogenous which is also a big issue. The biggest analytical challenge that's developed over the last year in terms of the research and validating this method is what's called hematocrit or HCT, variability and quantitation related issues. 
high HCT blood, as we would expect, is much more viscous and therefore does not spread out as much on the sample card. High HCT leads to smaller blood spots on the card. Low HCT is the opposite. The issue becomes when you take a fixed punch card or punch from a dry blood spot, three millimeters in diameter, you're sampling a different amount of blood depending upon HCT due to the viscosity issue. With higher HTC, there appears to be less spread on the card and therefore you'll be taking more blood. This in turn makes a uniform positive bias, meaning artificially inflated concentration versus the true value. Even if you expand the punch to sample the entire spot, that does not solve the bias issue in terms of the HCT. It just makes it inversely resulting. For those with lower HCT, there is a uniform bias high when the, higher, when the entire sample on the card is taken for the analysis. When or if this starts being a technology and begins to be implemented in the forensic arena, please let me know. I would be most interested in seeing the testimony from any likely Fry or Daubert hearing on it.